with another question that we received uh, via the web. And it says, does the Bible give examples of godly courtship or how should uh, you date a person, how to date a person? Uh, well, I, yeah. That is such a relevant yeah. question, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> I love that question. <laughs> question. So That's I great. would love to hear uh, what we have to uh, share here, panelists from the Word yes. of God here today. Well, we want to just uh, take us to one wonderful couple in the Bible, Jacob and uh, Rachel. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 20, 29, uh, something there in uh, verse 18 that I would just like to read in Genesis mm -hmm. chapter 29, verse 18. The Bible says, Now Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel your younger daughter. So I think the first principle of courtship is that we should be prepared to serve seven years <laughs> for our, 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 our beloved. Um, but it, 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 it is a wonderful thing. In fact, the Bible... Why not 14? Or, you know. <laughs> the Bible doesn't give many examples of uh, couples who were courting. It talks a lot more about their their marriage, but it does give a lot of principles mm. about yeah. courtship. And I want to just leave one, and, and I'm sure Andrew will give us some. Uh, and uh, the, the Bible speaks, for example, in Amos 3, verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? He's mm. speaking there about a compatibility. In 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 14, it says, what fellowship has light with darkness, mm. in other mm. words. Uh, but the text that I like and that I want to leave with us is in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 11. And uh, this is a wonderful principle of friendship in general, but can be applied to uh, Christian uh, courtship. And it says, it's speaking about uh, uh, Paul uh, when he was in jail and he asked uh, Timothy uh, to bring somebody along with him. He said, only Luke is with me in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 11. He says, get Mark <coughs> and bring him with you. Here's the point. For he is useful to me for ministry. Mm -hmm. One of the keys of choosing uh, a good life partner or principles of courtship, choose someone that will be useful to you in your Christian walk. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people choose somebody mm -hmm. who is not a Christian, is not faithful, and they say, well, uh, you know, I, I want to help them. I want to strengthen their faith. Mm -hmm. But marriage is not evangelism. Hmm. Yeah. You do not marry someone to help them make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. You need all the That's help right. you can get. Choose someone who is going to strengthen you and not hinder you on your way mm -hmm. to the kingdom mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Well, if I may, I, I want to take us to the Song of Solomon. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go through just different aspects of the book. So the first part of the book, chapters 1 all the way to 3, verse 5, is all about their courtship. Um, this is what at least we're calling it, right? Their dating That's time. Right. And the Song of Solomon is a beautiful love song mm. that just describes a conversation between two people, between two lovers. Mm -hmm. And it's just written in a really beautiful way. Um, and there are so many principles in it. I actually tell my youth and young adults who were actually studying this book and doing things from it right now um, that I believe that every single person should be reading this book. Wow. And the reason why I believe that is because it shows you what a wholesome relationship is supposed to be like. Hmm. Right. So if you are if you absorb yourself in this in this book you are going to recognize when a person is not good for you, mm -hmm. right? Because you know what, what true love actually looks like and what it should look like mm -hmm. and what you should do in your relationship and what you shouldn't do in your relationship, right? And there's so many things in here where one of the things is um, she, they are both focusing constantly on what is lovely in the other person, mm -hmm. right? Not just in their dating and courtship time, but also during their marriage, right? It never stops. And once sometimes when we get married, I mean, it's so easy to focus on, the, to, on harping those, those things that we don't exactly like, right? Mm -hmm. um, but to me, it's such an amazing example of the fact that, no, you stay with the lovely, mm -hmm. right? So they are like calling out things to each other all the time where he calls her my love 
the fairest among women, my beautiful one, my perfect one. He says, she says, my beloved, whom my soul loves, my friend. He even calls her a dove. I mean, these are things that we may not necessarily use, but the point is you are constantly caring about the other person, right? Mm -hmm. So like I see focusing on the lovely. I also see through the book, honesty and expressing yourself. Mm. They're constantly just being honest with each other and saying, this is how I feel. And she says, you know, several times, I feel lovesick, right? She just says it straight out. Um, mm -hmm. And then like, for example, in, um, let me do chapter seven, verse 10. Mm -hmm. um, they're talking about she says, I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me. So again, like she knows that he desires her, right? Mm. And she is also desiring him and they're both very honest about this. Mm. It's also, it also shows very much equality. They both have like equal voices. She actually speaks even more than he does. Mm. Um, and the confidence, value, she feels like she is beautiful and she says it straight out. She says, you know, I'm confident in who God created me. Hmm. Um, where she says, I'm dark but lovely in chapter one, verse five. Or then she says in chapter two, verse one, I'm the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Beautiful. Right? I mean, she knows who she is. Amen. So to me, there are so many lessons and then it, it kind of ends with, you know, that God's love actually comes through comes through okay, yeah. and that it is God's love that's really holding this relationship together. Hmm. What a beautiful, beautiful uh, just imagery that we find there in, in, the, in the Word of God and great reminders. I believe some people may be taking notes even as you two are <laughs> speaking here uh, to help strengthen their relationships and, and, and be prepared for, for something to come. Um, and it's just so great that we can go to the Word of God and find a wholesome picture of relationships, uh, which is difficult to find in this world. So we thank God that we can walk with another and experience the love of God through another. And that is the blessed uh, um, a part of a relationship.